Yo, pay, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Man, let's lock and load. Yeah. Just play. Yeah. No, turn me up. Yeah, yeah. Me, I think we got one. Yeah. Here we go. Tell me, what do you see? Yeah. When you look in the knee. Whoa. There are over 650 million water skiing clubs and 11 million active participants in my personal favorite activity, water skiing. Yes, I'm biased, but it's the best hobby and sport ever. But before I explain to you about how water skiing became a favorite pastime in some of my family members' lives and my own, let me explain how water skiing came to be and what it is today. So, how did water skiing even become a sport? Well, it all started with the idea that if you can ski on snow, you can probably ski on water too. In the US, Ralph Samuelson and his brother proved this theory to be true. It took them three attempts on Lake Pepin in Lake City, Minnesota. Ralph was in the water and his brother drove the boat. At first, Ralph used barrel staves and tried to be pulled up by the boat. That was a fail. Then he tried using snow skis, also a fail. The third time was the charm. Ralph used 8x9 boards with leather straps to secure his feet to the boards. He used a 100 foot sash with an iron handle as a makeshift tow rope. Ever since that moment, water skiing began to grow and develop into the popular sport it is today. Here are some of the landmark moments in the history of water skiing. During the 20s and 30s, Water skiing began to grow in popularity in the U.S. and in Europe. In 1939, the first national water skiing championship was held at Jones Beach in Long Island, New York. That same year, the American Water Ski Association was organized by Dan B. Haynes. The first world ski championships were held in France in 1949. Willa Worthington and Dick Polk Jr. skied for the U.S. Worthington won the slalom, jump, and overall titles. In 1972, water skiing was a demonstration Olympic sport at the Summer Games in West Germany. And that wraps up the brief history of water skiing. Today, water skiing has evolved into two categories, professional and recreational. Professional water skiing consists of three events, the jump, the trick, and the slalom. For jump skiing, the skiers use two skis to ride over a jump. They cut out of the wake and then cut back towards the jump to gain maximum speed before they hit their jump. The winner is determined by who jumps the farthest distance and successfully rides away for 100 feet. The jumpers get to choose their speed and ramp height depending on their age. Pro skiers usually have a jump height of 5 to 6 feet and the max speed is 58 miles per hour. Sometimes, when they hit the ramp, they can be going 70 miles per hour. Trick skiing is the most technical of the three professional skiing events. They use small, oval-shaped skis. The advanced skiers use one ski. Trick skiers have to perform two sets of tricks. One set is hand tricks, and the other is toe tricks. The skiers get a 20-second run for each set. The tricks are given points as they are performed, and they cannot be repeated. Slalom skiing is the last pro skiing event. The focus is on agility. Slalom skiers use one narrow long ski that varies between 57 to 70 inches based on the skier's height and weight. One foot is placed in front of the other facing forward in the ski bindings that are made out of either rubber or plastic. A slalom skiing course is made up of 26 buoys. There are entrance and exit gates that the skiers must go through in order for the run to qualify. There is a zigzag pattern of six turn buoys that the skier has to make. There is a straight pathway made by the buoys that the boat has to go in between as well. It's achieved for each boy landing and return to the course center line. Half boys are awarded for each stage completed. Sounding simple so far? Well, the catch is the distance from the boat center line to the boy, 11 and a half meters. 
So once the rope has shortened below 12 metres, there's simply not enough rope to reach the turn. It's then up to the skier's technique and body to bridge the gap at full stretch. A fall or failure to complete the course and the skier is out, scoring to the last completed half point. For professional tournaments, skiers choose their starting rope lengths and speeds. The tournament ends when the skier cannot complete the course at the rope length and speed of the boat. The maximum speed for women is 36 miles per hour and 38 miles per hour for men. Professional skiers have to use their body as a lever, which allows them to withstand loads that the normal human body wouldn't be able to. Skiers' top speed usually double the boat speed. Their bodies usually experience intense isometric contractions and extreme upper body torque with loads of up to 600 kilograms. Each turn can generate up to 4G of force. So yeah, professional skiers are insanely talented and amazing to watch. But... We all don't have that kind of talent. However, that still doesn't mean we can't love to ski. And this is where I want to share my family's and my own skiing stories with you. Okay, Rob, how long have you been skiing? Well, oh gosh, probably since I was, probably for about over 40 years. And when did you learn to ski? I learned to ski when I was probably about six years old. You took some time to take professional water skiing lessons in Florida. Can you describe your experience? Well, I wasn't taking lessons to be professional, but I was taking them from a pro. And um, it was, actually I did that twice, once for a week and another time just for a day. And the week-long course was uh, basically him, the teacher, teaching me the proper technique and uh, just trying to pound it into me how to you know how to have your right your body in the right position um, and so forth um what were some of the most important things that you learned in that class mm -hmm. uh, I would say proper proper body position coming into the turn into the turn just before you make it and then just as you're turning are probably uh, the most crucial points and I, I learned I got some good pointers from that. What was the best part of your experience there? Okay so why do you like skiing? I like skiing because it really forces you to work on technique and not just brute force. Um, you have to when you're skiing um, it's it's actually a really graceful thing when you get good at it, it's really cool to feel the power and feel how smooth it can be as well. What was the What was the biggest challenge you faced when you learned to ski? Ski. Um, uh, the biggest challenge was definitely learning how to get up on one ski because I could drop a ski really easily, but getting up on one, it took um, my uncle giving me a bunch of different suggestions, and we try them, and then we change it up. So it definitely got frustrating, but it was worth it once I was finally able to do it. Does Nikki talk about skiing too much? Yep. Yeah, she talks <laughs> way too much. <laughs> yeah.